Hey there, it's that time of year again, and it's been a little bit since I've shared some TV shows and movies for the season. I have, I think, about two other videos where I mention some more suggestions. If you don't hear them, they're most likely in there. For example, Gilmore Girls, is definitely mentioned in my first one. So I'll have those linked below if you wanna check those out later. There's so many good ones, starting with Brooklyn. I don't know why I hadn't thought about it. It totally gives that fall feeling. The main character is from Ireland and she immigrates to New York and it's set in the 1950s. There's some romance and obviously some hardships and adjustments as well. I will mention below in the description whether you can watch this on a streaming service or not. I'll try my best to find that out and if not maybe check out your library. Next I've been making my way through this. I didn't realize how many seasons there were of One Tree Hill. That gives ultimate fall feeling similar to Gilmore Girls and plus you've got the in school aspect which I mean screams September. That one I do know for sure is on Amazon and I think I'm like on the fourth season so far. I really enjoyed the first couple seasons and then I fell away a little bit. I've picked it up again. Of course you got Chad Michael Murray which brings me to another show that I'm just loving. And here in Canada, we watch it on CTV and you can watch it on the website. But I think in the US, at least the first season has come out. There are two seasons in total. And if you like something like Virgin River, then I guarantee, especially if you like Chad Michael Murray and a Cinderella story with Hilary Duff and Freaky Friday and all those good ones, which I'm super excited that Freaky Friday 2 is coming out. But back to this one, it is Sullivan's Crossing. Oh my gosh. If you're a Gilmore Girls fan, the actor who plays Luke is in this which is super exciting and brings a whole other layer to it. A Walk to Remember. Now this is more on the sad side of things. Got Mandy Moore, the school setting and the romance. Now it's Nicholas Sparks based on one of his books, like The Notebook, which is the next one I'm gonna mention. Keep that in mind if you're not wanting to be super sad, maybe not watch that one at that time, but I felt like it gave that time of year, autumn, fall feeling. And as I mentioned, The Notebook is another one that came to mind. And I feel like, it's been a while since I've watched it, but it could be like a spring, a summer, an autumn, but I just thought of it as autumn. I feel like there's, a scene where there are leaves falling and it's very autumn-esque when I searched that up and you've got classic Nicholas Sparks again love story and I think it's hard to tell but between that one and A Walk to Remember those are my two favorite Nicholas Sparks ones. And oh I just remembered I'm on a roll here. The last song with Miley Cyrus is another really good Nicholas Sparks converted into a movie. Oh, I recently got into not too gory murder mystery type things like an Agatha Christie. And I finally got around to watching Knives Out and had the best time watching that. I had recently watched a few of the Agatha Christie ones that they had turned into movies and I was looking for something else. I already watched Clue and all of that. So yeah, Knives Out was a great one. I haven't found a way to watch the second one, something to do with an onion in the title, I can't really remember, but I really want to watch that one too. And speaking of Agatha Christie, I also watched Death on the Nile, Murder on the Orient Express, and A Haunting in Venice. All three of those were a really fun journey. Let me just look back to see what I reviewed them on Letterboxd, which if you don't know is an app where you can, similar to Goodreads, log all of the movies and things that you watch and rate them and have friends. And I've having a great time on there. It looks like I really enjoyed Death on the Nile and Haunting in Venice the most. I gave those four out of five stars. And then the Murder on the Orient Express, I think that was the first one they did. I ended up giving that one a three out of five, but I still had a great time. So if you're looking for that murder mystery, if you're really into cozy mystery books, they didn't get too, too gory um, from what I remember. So that might be something right up your alley that you'd like to check out. Back to the kind of school feeling and that angsty feeling. I recently rewatched uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower and that one's based off of a book, which I haven't read yet, but it does have a lot of hard hitting topics. So just keep that in mind. And again, that's another one where you gotta keep in mind how you're feeling because it does get very emotional at certain points and it's really tough. I really enjoyed that and think that it's perfect for this time of year. Mmm, Sleepy Hollow. Now, you know what? I don't know if I've watched this before, and I think there's a couple renditions of it, but this is kind of leaning towards the more spooky Halloween feel of that one. Might be a fun one to check out, as well as October. 
October Sky. I believe it has one of the male characters from One Tree Hill in it. I think I watched like an episode and a half of it. It's a series. I believe it's on Amazon Prime. There's a little bit of a time jump as well. Oh, Dead Poets Society. Every time I think of Taylor Swift's new album, I'm like, oh, what is it called? Dead Poets Society? No, it's not called that. But that made me think of the movie. Very similar. Poetry and school. And this was another one that came to mind. Now, I haven't watched this one in a while, so I can't remember exactly what happens in it. Robin Williams is in it. I feel like this is another one where it's got some tough topics in it, so just keep that in mind too. Another suggestion, this one also has Robin Williams in it, and it features a basically boy genius. He's not a boy, but he's an adult working in a university cleaning the building. I feel like he's had a troubled past, and I always get excited for something where you wouldn't be able to tell that person has that genius or that spark or that incredible creativity on the surface. Someone works with them to help reel that out for their potential. I love that kind of storyline. And again, this one's set during school season. So that just makes me think of Autumn. I rewatched that one recently and I did enjoy it. So it was nice that it wasn't a letdown. Sometimes you watch movies or shows and you're like, hmm, this isn't as good as I remember it being or I originally felt. Anything with Robin Williams in it definitely has that great acting that you might be looking for. Ooh, another school related series, kind of like One Tree Hill, but make it mystery and quirky is Veronica Mars. Man, I need to rewatch that show. It's just incredible. It's very mystery focused. She's basically like a high school detective. The main actress who plays Veronica is Kristen Bell and I just think she's such an incredible actress. She has such great range and if you don't know she's the one who does the voice in Frozen for Anna. Veronica Mars, if you're wanting to get into a show similar to like a Gilmore Girls or a One Tree Hill where you just become completely immersed in it, I would suggest trying Veronica Veronica Mars, and I believe that one is on Prime. I have the hard copies. <laughs> what am I saying? I don't know what I'm saying. Um, oh, I just remembered. I was like, what is this one? See how they run. See how they run is another one where if you're looking for a murder mystery, Agatha Christie-esque, then I would suggest checking this one out. Also, if you like Knives Out, I would put it in that category as well. Anything that's like a murder mystery just gives me that autumn fall feeling. And this one has the same actress that that's in Brooklyn, Cersei Ronan. She's also the one who is in the latest rendition of Little Women. I think that she did such a great job in this one. Um, she's a very versatile actress as well and um, it had its humorous moments as well as its real moments and I had such a good time just kind of going into this one blind. Next, I just saw that the second season of Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power came out. I blasted through the ones that they had available, all three of them the past couple days and I had such a good time. Now I know that maybe not everything is as accurate to how the originals were in The Hobbit, but it's fun to get just a glimpse of what it might have been like before The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings and I had such a good time. And when I think of high fantasy like that, I think of movies like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. So I would suggest checking this one out if you're interested. I also realized that I didn't include The Hobbit in any of my previous recommendation videos. So I would also suggest watching The Hobbit if you haven't. I mean, there are three movies in that series. Both of these are on Amazon Prime. I'm actually gonna watch The Hobbit and try to get through all three of the movies in the next couple days because, you know, I just got that feeling and I have to wait till Thursday for the next one in The Rings of Power. Also, I, in my other Reading Cottage vlog, I mentioned that I caught the tail end of one of my favorite movies, Almost Famous. And if you like Daisy Jones and the Six, the book, the series, then I think you'll really enjoy Almost Famous. And again, I feel like this one just gives that autumn feel. The, the colors, the costuming, the main character is someone who's in high school, who's basically following along this famous band in the 70s in this movie. Yeah, if you haven't checked out Almost Famous, I highly suggest checking it out. Now there are some points 
where it's like a little risque and there's some drugs, but the music and the costuming and the acting is just so incredible. You can skip over the parts that you're not really interested in. Back to another school related one. I can't believe I haven't mentioned this. I'm such a fan, especially of the early, the next generation Degrassi series. This one is also on Amazon Prime. Like I said, the first few seasons of Degrassi Next Generation are my favorite. And then it just kind of ebbs and flows I find as I go through it. The older ones are good too, but the next generation just has my heart those first few seasons. I hadn't mentioned Anna Green Gables, the one from the 80s with Megan Follows, because at the time my recommendation videos were just for streaming services like Netflix. I did mention Anne with an E, which is a great rendition, but this one with Megan Follows is just, oh, it's so good. And I need to watch it. I have it finally on a Blu-ray, so I definitely need to watch that this season. Sometimes I just have favorite things and I'm like, oh, I need to watch that. And then I just don't, and I need to get over that. <laughs> it's like, what am I saving it? for it. I can watch it however many times I want and the music is just incredible. I could listen to it anytime. Having a nice walk I feel like it would be fun to listen to that. I should do that. <laughs> the last few that I want to share with you actually have physically with me here and I don't believe I've mentioned these previously. Ooh, I did have Almost Famous physically here and it's got um oh, what's her name? Kate Hudson. Yes. So she's the one who's on the cover, Kate Hudson. She did an incredible job. The next one that I want to suggest is called Stardust. And this leans towards more of the fantasy and the magical. There are stars that are humans that come down to earth and there's these really incredible flying machines. It's just such a fun, magical time if you're looking for that kind of feel for this time of year. I have to watch this again. Another one of my favorite movies is Fly Away Home. And you can tell by the cover of the foliage there that it is very much autumn feels. And you've got Anna Paquin. If you've watched X-Men, uh, that's her right here. And I have to say, I like geese in this movie, but in real life, I'm not a big fan, especially the full grown ones. They're just not what I picture. And obviously they didn't grow up kind of domesticated. So yeah, I'm not a fan of Canadian geese. They're a little bit mean and I have some beef with them now, but I still love the fly away home version. And then lastly, man, this is such a niche show. And I'm not sure how many people will know about it, but the main actress is in, that's in this is in The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, which is also based off of a book series, Amber Tamblin. So I believe there's just two seasons. This one, again, she's in high school, recently moved to Arcadia, and her name is Joan Girardi, Joan of Arcadia. So I think it's playing off of the real Joan of Arcadia and somehow, I can't remember what happens and also I just don't wanna spoil it for you. She's able to talk to God and God talks to her in different situations in life. And there's so many moments where she has a good influence on things and where she's navigating it. And it's such a unique idea. This one also makes me think of another niche show that I don't know a lot of people know about. And I feel like it might have been filmed in Canada. I don't know if it's a Canadian show or not. I love that. And I really want to find that one physically as well. Ah, yes. So being Erica. And again, this one's such a unique one. And it's got a balance of humor, yet serious moments in it as well. And I think it's her therapist that I feel like has some... Okay, I had to transfer some footage to make room so for some more. What I was saying was I feel like it's her therapist that helps guide the story and brings her back into her past to help her with her problems. So that's why it kind of reminds me of the Joan of Arcadia because I can't remember if it's an angel as her therapist or what it is. But anywho, another great show. I'm off on a tangent. The last one that I want to get to because it's in my background and I, I feel like I can't leave this one out. And this one's just a classic. And for all the millennials and people who know Lizzie McGuire, I got the pop figure, her cartoon as well. And I'm just 
obsessed in love. I watched it when it first came out over and over again and I was only able to get my hands on the first season on disc unfortunately but both seasons are on Disney Plus if you want to watch it there. I just feel like it's got the classic school setting again and automatically you think of fall in my mind. She's just such a great character even now when you watch it at this age. The problems and things that she goes through and navigates and the funny moments and the friends and the ups and downs it's just such a great time. Thank you so much for watching my autumn suggestions this season. I hope you enjoy. Let me know down below if you're a fan of any of these. I'd love to gab with you about that or if you have any other suggestions that I haven't mentioned here or in my previous videos, feel free to check those out if you want as well. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of the videos that I make. I will see you in my next one. Bye!